G'day, welcome to this Australian Open Life. Uh, just a short intro to let you know that this is a audio only episode. Um, uh, so you can consider this a podcast um, and, uh, and we will bring you a, uh, a visual version soon. Enjoy the episode. G'day and welcome to this Australian Open Life brought to you by Wise Words Media and Calumny Films. I'm the bloke who walks. And for those of you that are new to the channel, which is pretty much everyone and anyone, uh, thanks to those that have been dropping in to look at the uh, the episodes, recent episodes, um, I thought it was about time uh, that we move away from setting the scene of next year's Australian Open 2022. And we're going to be experimenting, uh, presenting some different topics. And uh, I thought the first one we'd get into, um, as far as players go, we're going to be looking at some different type of players leading into the Australian Open. Um, players outside the top 100 that automatically qualify. Who is banging on the door? Uh, looking to secure a automatic qualifying spot in the opening rounds uh, from the Challenger Tour. And the first player that I want to bring to your attention, uh, one of the uh, movers over the last week as at the 6th of December, uh, so you can tell this, um, this uh, info is pretty fresh. Nuno Borges, a Portuguese player 24 years of age, who's uh, played 22 tournaments this year, has uh, shot up the rankings this week uh, to 175, which I believe is a career high ranking. Uh, his previous career high was 185, but with a rankings move of 32 points up the rankings now at 175, Nuno, uh, who was born in Portugal, is now at a career high ranking of 175, and those 32 points make him the uh, the um, uh, what sort of uh, moniker can we give him? I would, it makes him the highest, the fastest moving player in the men's uh, ATP tour uh, uh, this week, as at the 6th of December. Uh, those rankings came out uh, Monday. Um, 260 points, uh, Nuno's played uh, 22 tournaments this year and, uh, and if we drill down, um, if we drill down into um, uh, his recent head-to-heads and uh, I was just looking through uh, Nuno's um, uh, achievements over the last few weeks and it's fair to say that this bloke is on fire. Uh, he's won his last four tournaments. He has uh, been a finalist in his last six tournaments and he uh, he started off in Lisbon with a finals appearance uh, in his home country uh, on the uh, 27th of September, picked up 48 points and uh, his last tournament was uh, the 22nd of November which he won and picking up 80 points. So he's been racking up the points, moving up the rankings. And uh, these are the sort of players that uh, that we're interested in uh, highlighting here because they don't get a lot of coverage. And it doesn't matter if they're, they're not Australian. You know, tennis is a, glo- a global game and uh, and these, these guys and girls will be champing at the bit to get back into Melbourne um, uh, to start... Um, start their assault in the Australian Open and uh, as we know the Australian Open starts uh, the first week of the tournament is the uh, the middle of January uh, but uh, before we go on to that um, I'll just tell you some of the other tournaments that, he, that, that this guy has been a finalist in and won so as I said before last six tournaments this bloke has participated in he's been twice a finalist and he's won four so the bloke is on fire so uh you need to be in the top 100 to 
to get an automatic qualification. But uh, if he does come down uh, to Australia um, and uh, and prepare well through December, if he gets here in time uh, for a January start, uh, now I'm not going to go into all the the, um, the details about um, uh, 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 you know, international arrivals. That uh, we'll leave that to somebody else. But once he gets once he gets his foot in the door at uh, whichever challenger tournament or qualifying tournament um, that he uh, that he wants to participate in, and you can check out all those tournament dates in our first qualifying episode, uh, which was uh, released this week. So look out for that one uh, with the blue thumbnail, the royal blue thumbnail. You'll see it there if you want to know the dates and uh, the, th the there's three different states: um, New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia. There's Adelaide, Melbourne, Sydney, and there's also some regional tournaments, some wheelchair open tournaments um, in uh, in Craigieburn here in Victoria. But uh, Nuno might be contesting those, but. Um, have a listen to this Lisbon finalist, Barcelona finalist, Ireras <laughs> in Portugal, and you can tell that I haven't been to Portugal. I don't, I've never had to pronounce that before. Braga, uh, which is also in Portugal, as we just click over there. So uh, obviously uh, doing well in front of his home crowds. Uh, flew out to Tenerife on the, uh, to play and win on the first of um, oh, it was the seventh of November Tenerife in Spain, and uh, the most recent win uh, the end of November last week playing at Manama in Bahrain, uh, just around the corner from uh, where the Australian Socceroos have played all their qualifying matches for uh, for the World Cup. Uh, so we'll wrap it up there. Um, that's that's a, a good old summary um, to keep you going. Um, uh, I hope you're enjoying um, uh, seeing the preparations for the uh, for the 2022 uh, Australian Open. Uh, what we've been trying to do with this uh, these episodes is give you a feel for the preparations that are going on. Um, there's a lot of hard work going into setting it up. Yes, it looks very um, sparse and it looks very spare, but um, uh, if you um, look, uh, read between the lines of uh, what you're seeing in our, in our um, uh, uh, footage that we're filming is that we're going in uh, after the workers um, finish their, uh, their day shift. So um, uh, the teaser that, uh, that appeared uh, the other day um, uh, that was taken um, in the morning, but uh, out of uh, we made sure we weren't in the way of any workers. Uh, so yes, it looks pretty empty, doesn't it? But um, uh, the reason for that being uh, deliberately went back late in the afternoon, early evening, to make sure that we weren't in the way and we weren't causing uh, causing any uh, any distractions. Um, please uh, like this uh, this video. Um, and all the likes, all the comments, all the subscriptions um, uh, tell the algorithm in YouTube that uh, this is a channel to watch. And um, uh, I'll be going into some details later on about uh, how we're planning to um, attack the, um, uh, the coverage of uh, the tennis in this channel. But uh, it'll be unique content um, uh, such as this. So uh, the next episode, look out for, we'll be doing another... Um, uh, episode highlighting uh, on the women's side, the WTA, the WTA tour, looking into uh, who's who's been moving up the rankings um, as we get into uh, December and uh, January is going to come around pretty quick. So, um, yep, like, subscribe, and uh, leave a comment and let us know uh, what your favourite Australian Open memory. Uh, is and uh, I'm sure uh, if you're a real uh, red hot tennis fan uh, like anyone in Melbourne, I'm sure you're looking forward to the uh, next year's um, Australian Open 2022. Thank you for listening and watching this Australian Open life. I'm the bloke who walks, and we will catch you in the next episode. Bye for now. And uh, watch out for Nuno Borges from Portugal. From Portugal. We're bringing you fresh episodes 
in the lead up to and during Australian Open 2022. Wise Words Media and Calumny Films. We're based in Melbourne, Australia.